Welcome to the introduction to niche brainstorming. Hopefully this will help you to get your creative juices flowing. We're going to talk a little bit about different options for brainstorming and how to how to come up with product ideas um, when you're not used to being creative. <laughs> so there are a couple steps that I'm going to show this. So first I want to introduce you to a website that you've probably never seen before. Right? <laughs> called Amazon. So this is one of the, the best ways to, to get started um, expanding your, your ideas and thoughts. Now actually before we go there, let's pop over here and, and what we want to do is come up with some initial ideas. When you start brainstorming, we want to have an initial list. So I would recommend creating a list, whether it's in the computer or on a paper, whatever works for you, but just start with a list of, of ideas that come to mind. This can be products that you have an interest in. Um, this can be um, just things that you see as you're, you're sitting at your desk or walking around during your day. Air plant, for example. Next thing that comes to mind for me is um, vase um, plant pot. I've got a little bouncy ball on my uh, um, desk here, so I'm going to put balls on there, um, sports. And so we start by creating this list of just general words, and it doesn't have to be products. Don't, don't get stuck on the idea that this is product ideas. This is your initial ideas. That's all we're doing here. Create a list of, of words and ideas and as you do this you're giving yourself something to to go from this is your your taking your blank slate and filling up the slate then the next step we're going to come back to this list and start thinking of related products so air plant for example let's look for air plant containers plant containers um, hanging plant containers. So those are all ideas that can come out of that, right? And so as you as you think about this and if you're looking at things that you have, I would think of all of everything in this image is a potential product. So we could do shelving systems, decor shelves. We could do um, this at first looked like a turtle to me. We could do turtle decor or other niche decor, right? That's focused on just one theme. Um, we can do the uh, air plant containers. Um, we can do decorative rocks. We can do decorative lights and we can do touch lights and we can do LED lights. Um, we can do uh, um, inspirational um, sayings on different you know things like uh, um, sandstone and and wood and driftwood and um, plaques and you know there's all kinds of possibilities there so we look at that and just start seeing all the options now here's where we can really start growing this we come over to Amazon and actually I had uh, there we go here's one ready to go so we go to Amazon and we start typing air plant, right? And as soon as we start typing air, they bring up all of these options. Well, there are things we want to avoid, like AirPods, anything electronics, I wouldn't mess with. Okay, so there are some main categories to, to avoid working with, mainly because they're, they're just too competitive. They're saturated markets, competitive and often difficult to, to make a profit or even to get to break into the industry or find a supplier. So electronics is one of those. Fashion, the fashion industry, which includes clothing, perfumes, and, and fragrances, and jewelry. I, I wouldn't mess with those um, primarily. Now, that doesn't mean you can't work with some offshoots of that. So jewelry, for example, is a very competitive, very difficult niche. But if you focus on, or I'm sorry, industry, but if you focus on a very tight sub-niche of that, like maybe jewelry boxes, well, that would be okay, because that's not jewelry itself, but it's a a sub-sub-niche that is very specific. So as we start typing in here, look at what's coming up. Air fryers? Well, maybe we could do air fryers, and that's something we maybe didn't think about. Air purifiers? Mm, possibly. That might be a, a difficult one to, you know, it's kind of an electronic, but 
there are these things that, that are coming up. Air fresheners, that makes me think of uh, maybe, what's the other thing that makes a scent? The like the little sticks of, of stuff that you burn. Incense. <laughs> Incense, you know. So anyway, those are things that came to mind as I'm looking at this, and I couldn't even think of the word, but I, I could see it in my head. Um, all right, so air plants. And so as we start typing in air plants, we'll look at that. Amazon's giving us all these other ideas. Well, we could sell air plants themselves. You could probably find suppliers for air plants. We could do the air plant holders, air plant fertilizers, air plant hangers, food. And we've got all of these possibilities that come up when we start typing our ideas in here. Now, if we go in and just put air plants into the search, then we're going to have visual examples of things too. We're going to have departments over here. Garden and lawn care, cacti and succulent plants, plant terrariums. Oh, we could, we could do that, right? Hanging planters, vine plants, um, flower plants and seeds planters. So all of those are, are potential areas for us to go into. And then we look down at this and we can see some of those plant holders and, and uh, air plant hangers and stuff. Um, and that can give us some ideas of, of how much potential there is in this industry and so yes if we wanted to do a website uh, a focused niche just on air plants there's a lot there right and this is just one idea that we started from right and you could do this with every one of your ideas and here's another we take it a step further if you look at uh, let's take this one and once we click into it the next thing I want you to do is go down scroll down below and look at the other options and we'll start, it's just going down the rabbit hole. That's really what we're doing here. So we look at this and say, oh, this is cool, a hanging plant terrarium. So we click on the plant terrarium, and we go deeper down that rabbit hole. And so now as we scroll down from here, we see, oh, well, we've even got the rocks. We've got this, uh, you know, this wall uh, thing, right? And we've got all of these possibilities. And before long, as we click on some of these others, we'll get into entirely different niches and, and other areas. Now we don't want to go too broad. We don't want to try and do everything we're seeing here on one website. If we're going to do a website on air plants or air plant containers, I would say we want to keep it pretty tight there. We could do the media, we could do the plants, and we could do the containers all on one site. Um, but the more, the tighter you are on your niche in the first year, the easier, it's going, the easier it's going to be for you to become an authority and to really break into that and, and get traffic. Okay? So keep that in mind. The broader you go, the more difficult it's going to be, the more work it's going to take for you to actually drive traffic, get the attention of the search engines, and therefore customers. So, and honestly, looking at just this niche, I think air plants... Uh, air plant containers, not even the plants themselves, because that's that's a little trickier to do, but just air plant containers, you could do a whole niche website on that, no problem. And and just to show you, you could do this with any niche. Let's just take salt shakers. In fact, I'm going to go back up here to salt. Oh, look at this. We've got salt and pepper shakers. We've got salt lamps. We've got uh, uh, salt rock lamp, right? Yeah. But grinders. The salt grinders is one. So not just salt shakers, but salt grinders and pepper grinders, right? And so those are things that we could work with. And just putting the word salt in there brings up all of these other ideas. And if we do the grinders, salt grinders, oh, mills, salt mills, there's some other key words for it, right? We do a, a search for that, and we've got over 2,000 results on Amazon of this type of product. And so there's all these different varieties of this type of product, anywhere from a $5 type product to a 50 and probably even over a $100 item. And so we've got a wide range of potential products. And so again, a niche in itself, just salt and pepper grinders. That's, that's the whole website would just be about that product. We don't get into everything else in the kitchen. We just focus. 
very, very tight niche. Okay, That is what a niche is about. And it's really important that we have that focus because the focus of a product niche determines how easy it's going to be to get traffic and to get recognized and how um, how much work you have to do. So it, it's, it's all about getting the search engine to recognize you, the work you have to do to make that happen, um, and becoming the authority. There's, there's a lot that goes into promoting a website. And so don't make it hard on yourself. Don't try to go too broad. Make it very, very niche specific, very, very micro niche specific. Um, that will help you learn what you need to do learn how to do the marketing for your first website, and then once you've got those skills and you've done it with your first site, then we can move on to another site, and eventually you might get to the point where you say, hey, I'm going to tackle you know, competing with Walmart and Amazon and become an everything store, but you're not going to do that until you have the experience because you've practiced on micro-niche websites. The value of doing a niche, part of the, the importance of that is if we go out and try to get Google to recognize us, if we have a one page, you know, one product is our air plant container and another product is our air plant media, the, the pebbles and our air plant moss and then our air plants, well those are all related. But if we then have a page that is a product of salt lamps, Google's um, computer looks at that content and they say, well, all this air plant stuff is related, but salt lamps, that's not related to that. That's different. And so then all of a sudden they, they have a conundrum and they say, well, we can't rank the site for salt lamps because it's not all about salt lamps, but I don't know if I should rank it for air plants because it has this salt lamp over here. And over here they have this shelving unit and over here they have these... Um, wall plaques and, and themed sayings, you see what I'm saying? It starts to get so complicated that Google doesn't know what to rank you for and so it takes longer and more work on your part to rank. And so that's why it's important, that's one of the reasons it's important to focus on a niche is because we don't want to confuse Google's computers, we want to make it obvious what we're about so that they know what to rank us for and the sooner the better. And the other side of that is we have to do that optimization work. We have to research the keywords for everything that we're doing in our niche. And so if we have the air plants and the air plant containers and all that's related, but then if we throw in salt lamps, well, now we have to go do research on that and we have to optimize that as well. And if we want to do the... Um, you know, a shelving unit to put all of this stuff on in our home, well, that's a totally different thing. We've got to go do the research on that. And each time you do this keyword research on one of these niches, you're spending hours. We're, we're talking three to ten hours just doing the keyword research on one spreadsheet of a list of words. And so not only is it hard to get Google to accept you if you're trying to go too broad, but it's going to be hard for you to do the work needed to properly optimize your site. So focus on your niche. Do yourself a favor. Keep it tight. When you start thinking about, oh, I could add this and I could do this, you, you know, it's, it's like a dog owner. Well, gosh, a dog owner likes to take their dog hiking sometimes, so I could do all the hiking supplies and camping supplies, and they might want to take their dog to the beach, so I could do beach supplies. No, 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 no. Now we're getting into a, a one-stop store shop and you don't have the time, the money, or the experience to make that go. Okay, Walmart and Amazon, they have millions of dollars to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they have the experience to make it happen. If you don't have all that, don't try to tackle it.